Hello, everybody. Josh Neighbors here, Locked On Big 12 podcast. This will be airing on the 13th of May, 2022. Robbie Triano from SiriusXM is here with us. We are power ranking the Big 12 running back groups for 2022. In part one, we had Texas one, Kansas two, Kansas State three, Oklahoma four, and TCU at five. Who will we be picking in the back end? That's coming up right after this. You are Locked On Big 12, your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, once again, Josh Neighbors here with us. It's Robbie Triano. So our top five in the Big 12 for running backs, one more time. It was Texas 1, Kansas 2, uh, Kansas State 3, Oklahoma 4, TCU 5. So that brings us to number six. The way we're doing this is I've had the odds. Robbie has had the even. So, Robbie, we're at number six. Who is your first team you're selecting for part two of this? So I'm going with a group that actually is returning a, a good amount of production. I would act, actually be returning the top two running backs, and I'm going to Lubbock. I'm going to take yeah. Texas Tech. They have Taj Brooks. They have Sir Roderick Thompson. Taj Brooks, let's start with him. Last year, 87 rushes, 568 yards, seven touchdowns, averaged six and a half yards per carry. That's spicy. And Sir Roderick Thompson feels like he's been here forever. I've seen him in the Alan Bowman days. I think since I started working on Sirius XM, Sir Roderick Thompson has been here. But 401 carries uh, for his career, 1,980 yards and 33 touchdowns. He's also proven to be able to catch in the backfield, 68 catches, 401 yards. So when we look at this group stats wise, I'm high on them. You know, they have, I would consider probably like, They have returning pieces for this offense, but what makes me nervous, and I actually was going to consider putting them lower, was when I look at what the Zach Kitley offense is Mm. going to look like, I don't think the running back is going to be as involved. And when I say that, let's look to last year, Western Kentucky, where Bailey Zapp was the quarterback. Team had 349 rushes. Okay, that's good. Well, how many passing attempts did they have? 647. That is basically not, not all. That is basically double. So when it comes to the passing attempts and obviously Bailey Zapp is a good quarterback. So he's, he's playing to his strengths. I understand that, but that is a staggering amount. And when we look at his background, his two mentors, Mike Leach and Cliff Kingsbury, that is air raid. So when it comes to running the football, I don't know if they're going to make as much of an emphasis on it. And for context of like what the rest of the league in the big 12 looks like, Last year, Oklahoma State, they had 440, hold on. Yep, they had 447 passing attempts and 620 rushing attempts. So when it comes to like the difference in style of play with some of these, like I think that they have good talent, but do I trust them to be a run heavy team? No. So that's where I kind of have some qualms about ranking this running back room. But if they do decide to run the football, they do have experience, they do have talent. Um, but I don't think they're going to be getting the rock as much. Yeah, I mean, no Weddington last year in 12 games, 101 carries, right? That, that's around, I mean, at, at that point, what, it's less than 10 a game. Yeah. Um, you know, Adam Colefield last year for them, uh, 81 attempts uh, in 14 games. Uh, Kai Robishaw last year, 13 games, 67 attempts. So, look, you know, it might add up in the aggregate, but this is not a team that's really focused on running the football. Now, I will say that the one thing is these guys can do a lot. Like Xavier White, you know, is a guy that they kind of moved around a bit, wide receiver running back. Um, so I, I, I'm i with you on this. I, I think they should be sixth. Um, I'm, I'm dead on with you, too, of like I'm not sure how this manifests itself, right? How does this look where you bring all these guys back in an offense where the running backs aren't necessarily used, but – Zach Kitley talked about it, you know, like he mentioned getting the ball to playmakers is kind of the, the thing that he's really focused on, right? Get the ball to the best guys on the field. Um, and I, I, I think in the positive, like in terms of returning players, some of these backs are his best players, right? So uh, Agreed. I'm not very high in that wide receiver room. At right. All. So I think there's a good chance these guys get the rock a lot. I'm, I'm with you on, on Texas Tech there at six. Which then gets us to uh, number seven now. So I've got Oklahoma State at seven. Uh, I'm Ooh. not sure where you ha- where did you have them. Um, lower than that. Okay, so I think from seven to ten, I think you could mix and match. Um, I think we're at the point now where 
all of these teams we're talking about here towards the back end here have lost uh, thousand yard rushers. All right. Oklahoma State did. West Virginia did. Iowa State did. Baylor did. All those teams had guys who were primary ball carriers for them, who were really the centerpieces of their offense, right? Lenny Brown, Jalen Warren, uh, Brees Hall, and then Abram Smith were all the best players on their – most productive players, I should say, on their offenses. So Oklahoma State, I'm going because they've got a guy in Dominic Richardson I, I you know, I, I kind of know about, right? Um, you know, does have good speed, should get a lion's share of the work. They've got Jaden Nixon we saw a little bit. Last year, limited action was pretty good. They bring in the four-star Ollie Gordon, who a lot of people I know are excited about seeing him. So I think out of that group, um, you know, they can conjure up something maybe decent. But look, I have met seven for a reason. I think more of the offensive load is going to end up falling on the shoulders of uh, one Spencer Sanders. So, Robbie, I've got them at seventh. I, I think the one thing we, we saw last year was how good Mike Gundy was at adapting the offense to the talent that he had, something we talked about last episode. We think Mike Gundy, we think passing the rock, we think throwing it all over the yard. Great, right? But Mm -hmm. last year he adapted it. And let's see if he adapts it again to what this team can do. And I'm not sure running back is is what they do well. Yeah, um, this is a very solid group. Dominic Richardson put up solid numbers, but like them losing Jalen Warren is huge. I mean, like, we also didn't really see him emerge. Like, we didn't know he was going to be this good. Right. So no, the fact didn't. that he did that, like, I have trust in this offense here, um, especially with Casey Dunn as their OC, even though sometimes I think he made Oklahoma State fans want to pull out their hair on how they're, like, running on third and line right. multiple times. Um, but so this is a very solid group. They also add Texas A&M transfer DeAndre Jackson. He had two years at A&M, but only had 15 yards. Uh, so he didn't really play that much. So the depth of this team, they have six running or seven running backs adding him. So that is impressive. Um, but I, I, I'm I'm just not that that high on on this team when it comes to running the football, and it really feels like it comes to an offensive line type of situation. When we talked to Mike Gundy uh, before his spring game, he was basically saying like most of his offensive line is hurt, and he thinks it's the the weakest position that he has. Right. And we've seen what happens when Oklahoma State like feels pressure. Spencer Sanders just kind of crumbles. Um, so Except the Notre Dame game. So, and I don't really expect Spencer Sanders to really spread out the ball passing wise um, to open up some of this running game. Uh, so I'm, I'm not as high in this group because uh, I mean, it's just solid to average on um, this team, but I was like looking at the rushing stats from last year. Like we were talking about in the, pre- in the previous episode, like, should we consider like Adrian Martinez and this type of thing? Like, should we consider Spencer Sanders in this group? Last year, he was tenth in the conference with rushing yards. Nah, straight up rushes. Six hundred six hundred and sixty-eight yards. So right. obviously, we're not going to include him. But I do think there is a rushing attack here. I think they're obviously going to make an emphasis on it. It has been their emphasis. Uh, but very solid group. Uh, but I don't, I don't necessarily expect a Jalen Warren type of performance like last year. So who do you have at number eight then? This is a projection, and this is not like – so for my last episode, I talked about the criteria. Returning talent, production, offensive line, offensive coordinator, and five, and my number five was star power. This group has, I would consider, two of those, but two of them are very, very good. So for my number eight, they are losing their top two people, but I am putting the Baylor Bears mm, at wow. number eight. I um know. And I've I've done a lot of research on it, and we look at the production or the return talent and their production. It is not not very great. We have Tay Williams, who had 17 rushes last year for 181 yards, two touchdowns. The player that gets me the most excited, Craig Squirrel Williams. It is an amazing name, um, and he is 5'8", 173 yards. He reminds me a lot of Tristan Ebner when it comes Mm -hmm. to that offense. And when I was watching their spring game, he was – he was electric and he is an incredibly fast player. He is very elusive. And we were talking to Travis Roeder from Sikkim 365 and he sold me on him very much. So, but last year he missed most of the year because in 2020 he tore his ACL and MCL. So it's something to be worried about, but I'm honestly just putting so much faith in the offensive line, which is I would consider the best in the big 12 returning for next year and Jeff Grimes. And when we look at like, 
how this team has succeeded. It's been running the football. And I, I look at Abram Smith, who led the league in rushing last year. He had zero attempts in 2020. Zero. So right. I'm expecting this group to just like be very solid. I put so much faith in Jeff Grimes for that. And I see this tandem of Craig Squirrel Williams, unbelievable name, and Tay McWilliams. Uh, Tay McWilliams is six foot one, two eleven. I, I, I'm just gonna put him in that Abram Smith mold size wise. And Craig Williams, five foot eight, one hundred seventy three. I'm putting him in that Tristan Ebner role. So I'm just putting a lot of faith in this group. I know production wise, there are other teams that are better, but. I'm, I'm very high in Baylor just because it's a system that works. I've seen it work, and they have the pieces around it to make it work, especially with Blake Shapin. He's going to be more pass than what Gary Bohannon was, like more throwing it downfield. The, the threat of the pass has never been greater. Uh, so I, 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 I see a lot of good things for Baylor. Their depth stinks after this. Yeah. And that's where I'm worried about it, but I, I cannot in good faith put – Baylor at eight or nine, just because I trust their system so much. I think it's a good point. And also the one thing, you know, we talked about a little bit, their offensive line is supposed to be really good, right? They return a lot of the offensive line. And look, in the end of the day, like most running games, and this this really does occur at the NFL level, right? You, you see this all the time. There's a reason why some teams can just bring guys in and out and it works for them. Yeah, talent matters in some, some respects, but a lot of running game is a function of the offensive line, right? How well is the offensive line playing? If, you're, if they're pushing – you got a decent back back there. Good things will happen, right? That's kind of how this stuff goes. Um, Do you have what, any qualms what, about that, though? Um, I mean, I don't agree. I actually have them tenth because look and look. I I'm of more evaluating based off of like, okay, what do you have, right? Because here's the thing, Robbie. Like the we mentioned Kansas, we we have them at two, and I have them at three. So they end up two in our list because you pick them two, and. When we look back on this, people might say, oh, you know, Kansas, the backs weren't great or whatever. But, like, is their performance going to be necessarily um, – a lot of what they do is tied to some other stuff, right? Like, the numbers in terms of yards per carry for Devin Neal aren't great. Well, why, why do we think that? Because the team's not very good, right? So, a lot of this – you know, we might say, wow, Tay McWilliams is a really good player. Okay, he might actually be. But – I think part of it will also be a, a big part of it's function of how well does your line play, right? I, I think the, the next guy who's you know um, playing for Iowa State is going to be the same way, right? Uh, how well Jirel Brock does probably is a function of how good the offensive line is. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't say it's a qualm at all. I mean, look, we have them at eight, eight to ten. Once again, the, these teams right. are the, the teams we have left are West. Yeah, Virginia. when it comes to returning talent, I think they are the worst. But when it right. comes to projection, like. I good, think by yeah, the good end, coach, good scheme, good returning uh, players in the line. Yes. If healthy, I think Craig Squirrel, Squirrel Williams Squirrel. will be a top five. I think he'll be a top five running back in the league by the end of the year. And I, once again, I have that much faith in him. I'm cool with everything being up for interpretation. Like, you know, that, that's that's what you and I said with this list. Like, it really is what you value. And, and you know, for the folks who are going to be out there commenting on this, excited to see what you all value. You know, your, your opinions mm-hmm. might be different than ours. It's totally okay. All right. Totally okay. All right, this is not a personal attack. You just have anybody. to like the video. You have to like the video. Like and the vid and leave us your thoughts. Complain and then give a nice positive comment. Yeah, You're like yes. Your take sucks, but Josh is nice. But Josh is well, Josh is very respectful to Robbie. Uh, one quick word for our sponsors today. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. Go to built.com today. It's built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15. Most of the Built Bars have 150 calories, 16 grams of protein, only 9 grams of sugar, as well, and they also have now built puffs, which are delicious. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They've got birthday cake puffs, so get the birthday cake puffs for somebody special in your life. Go to built.com today. It's built.com. Promo code LOCK15 for 15% off. All right, so Robbie, I'll tell you what. At number nine, we have a really interesting case. I have West Virginia here, and um, Tony Mathis wasn't very good, to be honest, last year. Their, their entire running game was very good. Their offensive line wasn't very good. You know, like like the fact that Letty Brown somehow squeezed out a thousand yard season behind uh, a really, you know, not very, statuesque as the word I always use for my guy, Jared Daigie, uh, not a really good offense. And he squeezed a thousand yard season out of it. I was pretty impressed. Not going to lie. So the big wild card here for me is they bring in Lynn J. Dixon, who was a really high, highly talented recruit, was a guy at Clemson. Um, who's racked up over 1,400 yards, 
13 touchdowns, uh, 14 total. He was a top 30, Robbie, a top 30 recruit in the country. You know, we'll see what he can do, but that's a huge wild card for me. I mean, when you get a guy who's that talented, sure, sometimes stuff doesn't always work out, right? But that's a huge wild card in a conference where there's not a lot of sure things at running back, it feels like. If the Hogs up front for West Virginia can do a decent job, I know it's an area of Neil Brown's 100%, 110% sold on. Um, you know, it's not his least favorite group either. He mentioned what secondary is. But if they can block pretty well up front, and they're going to have to for a quarterback who has injury issues, you know, this could be a really this could be an exciting running back room. But, but Mathis got to learn behind a great back and Letty Brown. And then also to bring in a talent, a guy like Lynn J. Dixon and Justin Johnson Jr. is also there as well. So, you know, I, I think this might be the highest variance group. Maybe maybe Baylor is because because of how good their line is, and we don't know anything about these guys. But I think this group, in terms of returning talent, which is limited, but still have production there, and what they're bringing in as well, I think they got a chance. Might be a high variance group. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, this is a group that I had ten, but you're swaying me into nine. So, uh, but th- this group, it's who the really hell difficult. knows? Right? Who the hell knows? I want to be high in West Virginia this year, but I also don't. And it's just right. like, I, I love Neil Brown, but I don't think they have very good players. So I'm really torn about this team as a whole. I think they're the team besides the other team we're going to talk about next. Like I have so many question marks and like, just like what I, I have the toughest time visualizing what this team will look like. Um, and yeah, losing Letty Brown is huge. Uh, they do have a an experienced offensive line. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be great and full of NFL draft prospects, but Neil Brown told us earlier this week that they're returning all five starters on their offensive line. So I think that is important in this league to have that type of consistency. Uh, JT Daniels may open the field a little bit more in the passing game, uh, but when it comes to Graham Harrell, I think that when it comes to the running back position, I don't think it's going to be valued as much kind of like the Zach Kittley situation we were talking about earlier, obviously playing at Texas tech, being under Mike Leach and then seeing, you know, what he did at USC, obviously didn't have necessarily the greatest running back talent, but they were a team that did not put as much of an emphasis on it. Um, So I, I feel like if, when it comes to the running back position for them, I think we may see more pass catching running backs or like that's how they're going to be used a little bit more in the passing game. Uh, But talent wise, they're a bottom two team in the, in the conference for me. Uh, And there's not much else I can say about West Virginia. There was their win total five and a half. I I think it's, yeah. um, Uh, that it is might be one, tough I would year. not I would not bet on that one at all because there's a lot of people who are drinking the JT Daniels Kool-Aid. That's fine. I think that I don't know what he's got around him, right? That's like the big question. Yeah. Like, if he plays, he's a good player. Yeah, but like what's he got around him? And that, that's what goes to running backs, right? They're gonna need those guys to help out and step up in some way. Yeah, when I looked at West Virginia's spring game, I watched every spring game or the ones that did have one. West Virginia by far looked the smallest out of any team. I'm not very high in them this year, and it sucks because, like, it's it's difficult in this profession, like, for us in the media to separate, like, the coach who you know who talks to you, who is an amazing person, and, like, you believe is just, like, like you right. want that person in your life because he is just, like, an amazing person compared to – Matt Wells is like do. that, too. A lot yeah. of affection for Matt Wells. Compared to what he does in the field, like, I think Neil Brown does things the right way. And it, I, I think when it comes to his players, his players love him. I think that he sets them up for success. And I think he wants to do more with them outside of the football field. But when it comes to the team, I think this Graham Harrell thing is really just a Band-Aid. I really think that JT Daniels is selling hope uh, for this for this team. And recruiting-wise, they're doing better than what happened under Dana Hogerson. But uh, running back is a room I do not think I'm incredibly high on. But we'll see. And then it's number 10. You know, I know you get to pick the evens, but you don't get to get to pick here, Robbie. It's Iowa State and uh, fall from grace, right? From first to basically last now. Look, I've got no clue how good Jairo Brock's going to be. We've actually heard some stuff about him before. People thought he'd, you know, be a pretty good backup. Brees is just such a good player. They didn't really get to play. And so that's why Jairo Brock, you know, last is last. 37 rushes, 174 yards, touchdown, seven receptions, 43 yards, and a touchdown Bigger guy, six foot two fifteen, um, and you know he's gonna get the option to be the number one back. They got Deion Silas, 
who had a you know had, had some success. Um, uh, Cartavius Newton and then Karan Adams are freshman run RBs that they bring in, and uh, Eli Sanders is also there as well. I mean, this is just a backfield that's got all kinds of questions, and so you know, replacing the guy, uh, the greatest yeah. players in Iowa State history is is what they have to do. And I'm not I'm not trying to hold them up to that standard. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying mm-hmm. when I compare them to the rest of the conference, like you know. Um, I didn't have them last. I had them. I had Baylor out of them. I think Baylor's got better talent than them. But beyond that, man, I'm going with everybody else. I, when it comes to Iowa State, I like think that on paper they're one of the worst teams in the league because I know nothing about them. Hunter Deckers does nothing to get my my loins, you know, right. enthused or anything like that. And when it comes to like, let's just look at on offense what they're missing. They have Xavier Hutchinson, so I'll set that out. But let's look at the rest. Brock Purdy, gone. Brees Hall, gone. Charlie Kohler, gone. Chase Allen, gone. They're four best offensive players. I guess Xavier Hutchinson is in there. Yeah. So Actually, I've, I've never been as players. high on him as everybody else, but yes, you're right. So, like, I am just really confused about this team as a whole because I say all that, and when it comes to the defense, they've also lost a lot as well. But when I look at the win totals, it's seven and a half wins for this team. Like, right. where wh- – why are we going to project them to do a Matt Campbell, year? baby? That Matt is, Campbell experience. That is it. Like it is literally just the Matt Campbell experience, and I'm tired of it. And this is a team that I feel like, like we all crap on Lincoln Riley because like he's so sheltered and no one gets to see his team. Matt Campbell doesn't do a spring game. He does it for the people of Iowa. He does these scrimmages for them. He doesn't talk to the media. We know nothing about this team. So why are we just putting them at such a high level? We're just like, you know what? They're going to be better the next year. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know what yeah. Vegas knows. I mean, over under win total, like, like they, they could win, functionally speaking, they could win more games next year than they did this year. It doesn't always mean your team was, was better, right? Like, Context yeah. matters. I mean, their non-conference is is they're going to lose to Iowa on the road. They got SEMO in Ohio, so probably go two and one there. The good news for them is they get Baylor at home. They have OU at home. They have Kansas State at home. They've got Tech at home. So they're on the road at KU, Texas, Oklahoma State, and TCU. Like, you know, in terms of the road conference schedule, it's not that hard. So I'm with you on that. I'm with I'm with the idea that hey, seven and a half makes sense in context of the schedule, but in terms of talent, man, you're right. You're spot on. Like who the hell knows? Yeah. And like, I feel like I, I'm not losing it on Matt Campbell a little bit. I'm just more like skeptical. Well, I think that. it's because he had the one, the, the, the it was setting up for last year and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, like, he, his, he comments every year. Not, his comments though. At, well, this is a bit different though. Cause this team's way under the radar. And and has got two players that we're really sure about. They're not even on the radar. No one is talking right. about them. Right. I don't I don't know anything about them. When we come to we talking about the quarterback, none of us brings us Hunter Decker because who the hell right. is Hunter Deckers? I saw him in the Iowa game because Hunter Brock Purdy had a mental. Like, you tell a player though, yeah, you know, I think he's a four, four star. So like but the, but you know, how many um who was the four star kid Kansas State had recently? Was it Rubley? Not sure. We didn't see a kid, the kid like they didn't get on the field. And so, like, you know, people, people do this all the time. Like, we got a four-star quarterback. It's like, great, awesome. But, like, like you know, West Virginia's got a five-star quarterback, and their overall win total is five and a half. Yeah. Five so and a half. I'm not putting Matt Campbell in the hot seat or anything like that because it's just stupid, and I think, like, he has built success there. So I'm not going to say anything. I'm just watching you. I'm watching you, Matt Campbell, because disappointing, man. when it comes to the beginning of the season, it feels like they're always off to a slow start. It feels like last they lose year. They to Iowa every year. That's why. <laughs> yeah, and and even even like the year before that, I think it was Northern Iowa. I think in 2019 they like were went to double overtime or something with like a, a, just another Northern school Iowa. in Iowa. And it was it's just like I'm so confused by you. And when you say that con- you don't talk about championships, like oh cool, like we want to be the better person. We want to yeah, be the best yeah. version of ourselves. It's like <laughs> shut up. Like literally shut up, Matt Campbell. Like that was like. Bad. Talk about championships. You should have goals that aren't just be the best version of yourself. You should have tangible things. So, I, Robbie, I you sound fundamentally like you're disagree with him. Us bearing, us bearing them at 10 feels good to you. 
oh my god i was like i didn't i hope it didn't fall to me because i didn't want to talk about them because like when it comes to the running back room like who are these people trail brock last year 170 yard 174 yards one touchdown 74 or 37 attempts Deion silas five foot eight 185 yards sophomore 13 attempts 75 yards two touchdowns you're replacing Brees hall I don't think either of these people are going to do that. And obviously, like, I'm probably going to be wrong because we've seen great running backs out of Iowa State with Matt Campbell there, David Montgomery, Brees Hall. But, like, I'm so sick of praising this team right now. They've done nothing to earn praise. They've lost talent, and I do not think they've replenished it because, like, oh, we don't like to use NIL or, oh, we don't believe in the transfer portal that much. It's like I'm, 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 I don't understand why they're rated this high. It blows my mind. Well, there you go. That's, was I frustrated? Did I sound frustrated? No, there? yeah, you, no, you got it. People, people are mad at this because we boosted the leaving teams of the conference, and we've, uh, we've had some, we've had some harsh words with the teams that are staying. Uh, one more quick word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online and BetOnline.net. You guys can bet on uh, Heisman odds. You guys can bet on things for the NBA playoffs. You guys can bet on NHL playoffs, NASCAR, F1, UFC, Bellator, boxing, PFL. All those things at BetOnline and BetOnline.net today. Go there, sign up. You guys can do it on whatever device you like to use. Uh, Once again, BetOnline and BetOnline.net. It's where the game starts. All right, Robbie, here's the final list. Texas 1, Kansas 2, Kansas State 3, Oklahoma 4, TCU 5, Texas Tech 6, Oklahoma State 7, Baylor 8, West Virginia 9, Iowa State 10. There you go. Uh, Robbie, where can people find you and your work and all of its variety? You can follow me on Twitter at the Triano Kid. I will tweet out some Big 12 stuff. Obviously, go take your mom's credit card, dad's credit card. Go sign up for Sirius XM and listen to Big 12 Radio. You can hear Josh and I. Josh is very fiery on Texas. He gave a lot of fiery takes about the Longhorns yeah. this week. So uh, follow us for then. Listen along. We do great interviews, great stuff. Um, I'm really looking forward to this year. Really, really looking forward to it. All right, you guys can find us on Twitter at LO Big 12. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as well. Robbie, it was a pleasure. We'll have you back on soon. Love it. Thank you.